Hey guys, this is Milo back with another video, and today I'm going to show you guys how I sharpen saws. This isn't exactly going to be a tutorial just because I'm still kind of a beginner. I've been doing it for a year, but it's just so complicated. And I'm first going to show you the tools that I use. So these are my combination tools. There's a raker filing plate on some of these. There's a pin gauge. There's a jointer. But I use a sloped filing plate for my rakers, and then I use a long jointer for the jointing process. And lastly, I don't set by hand. I use this uh, setting tool with a spider. I think it's a Morin, and it's really nice. It helps me with accuracy, and it's really efficient if you have to set a tooth a lot. And right now, I'm about to joint the saw. So the first thing that I do is I put the long jointer in the center of the saw, and then I loosen the plates and then tighten them so that kind of fits to the curvature of the saw. What I didn't know before, if the curvature of the saw has already been lost by a short jointer and someone that just doesn't know what they're doing, then it's not going to joint your saw properly. And there's a lot of little issues with this that I've been having. It's been leaving my rakers higher than my cutter teeth, but I didn't realize that. I thought it was leaving my cutter teeth too short. And I think that's because the rakers are a different shape and they usually have a bit more steel than the cutters. And then it just takes off a little bit less with each stroke. Another thing to consider is that the jointer is handmade. It wasn't made by me, but I have the blueprints of it. And of course there could be slight issues with it. Also the file might not be perfectly straight. There's so many different aspects to saw sharpening. And to get to the perfect one thousandths of an inch, um, in accuracy, it's just so complicated, especially if other people have sharpened the saw in the past. And I have read a few extensive debates over if the curvature of the saw matters. Some people talk about how they spend 10 hours fixing it, and then other people say it doesn't matter. And aside from all of that, right now I'm making my raker gullets deeper, and that's important because you want your rakers to be thin enough so that they don't break when you're swadging them. It really does depend on the steel though, because I notice that the steel on this saw is really hard, but I still manage to swedge it over well enough. Another thing is that making your raker gullets deeper means you have to do less work in the future when you resharpen the saw. So of course, it's just nice to do that. Another thing is you want to make sure each side of the raker is symmetrical and you also want to make sure each gullet is the same depth. And this isn't as important as setting the saw and uh, giving your saw like 12 thousandths of an inch, for example, for in raker clearance. But it definitely is important, when you sharpen a saw you want to aim for perfection, but don't beat yourself up over it because that's something I struggled with. When I couldn't answer a small problem, I usually just lost motivation and didn't want to sharpen. So you kind of want to find a good middle ground. And right now I'm putting bolts into my vise for swedging, and that's so that the saw doesn't move around when I hammer on it. I actually had to tie paracord to one end later on. Because when you're on one side of the saw and you're hammering on the teeth, the back of it is going to lift up, even if you have the front of it secured down. And of course for like a thicker bucking saw that probably won't be an issue, but for this saw it definitely was kind of annoying. For swedging the teeth over, I'm using a bolt and a ball peen hammer instead of using a crosscut saw setting hammer, and that's because this helps me with accuracy. And before, I wasn't able to get enough of the hammer into the raker gullet to actually swedge it outwards. I was kind of swedging the tip downwards, and it seemed like that would be a bit more fragile in use. And also after you rejoint your saw, once it gets a bit duller, then you lose all of that swedge. So then you have to do a lot of work over again. And this kind of just saves you time. And that's important when it comes to saw sharpening, considering that it takes me about 14 hours to sharpen a saw. And at first sight, it does seem like saw sharpening is a very boring thing to do. And you're probably right, there's not that many professional saw sharpeners out there anymore, just because it's such a tedious and complicated process. Like, I've been doing this for a year, and I'm still learning every single time, and when I run into issues, there's not really much of a saw sharpening community for me to rely on. Like, I've actually never met somebody that likes to sharpen saws in person before, so that kind of goes to show how much of an uncommon hobby it is. And with all of these challenges, it does make me think, why do I still sharpen saws? And one reason is that I do sell the saws, and there's a bit of a demand for it, especially in Hawaii, it seems. 
because there's not that many crosscut saws there. But the money isn't really what draws me in because I'm probably making minimum wage considering that it takes me 14 hours to sharpen a saw. And I'm not the best saw sharpener, so I don't price my saws that much. I'm still learning with every saw, and this saw that I'm working on even has one mistake. Sure, it's by 20 thousandths of an inch on one tooth, but that still is considerable. One reason why I really like it is because there's a connection with the history. I feel like I'm the only one that's at my age that's doing this, and it makes it feel like a very special process. And it also is very relaxing. You know, I listen to music, and I just start working on the saw, and it's just a very peaceful way to spend an evening. And once I'm done sharpening a saw, I get to have the satisfaction that I cut the wood well with the saw, and I've only had about two saws run well, in my opinion. The other ones had pretty decent mistakes, like my spider for setting the teeth was off by a large measurement. But thankfully, my tools are good now, and I have understood all of the concepts, so it's just really practice at this point for me. And right now, I'm dressing the rakers. What I did is I swatched them over on both sides, and then I used my Anderson filing plate to make a sloped angle on them, and that's to allow clearance in the wood, and it's just set to like an optimal measurement. Also, they're 12 thousandths of an inch lower than the cutting teeth, and that's a good all-around height. It's not too aggressive, and it's not too shallow. It's kind of like that perfect sweet spot. And I'm finally done dressing the rakers. Next week, I'm going to post a video where I point up the cutters, and then I set the teeth, and then I'll be good. I didn't cover the cleaning the rust off the saw, and a few less major stages, but that's because this isn't a tutorial. I'm more showing you guys the way I do it and my experiences, and that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys like this video, and peace out.